If you recall, when we first introduced a string, we described that for a 3D element, there are in general six string components that will fully describe the deformation of this element. Epsilon x, y, and z are the normal strings that describe the change in size along the x, y, and z direction respectively. Gamma x, y, x, z, and y, z are shear strings and they describe the angle changes within the xy plane, xz plane, and yz plane, respectively. And if we reduce the general state to a 2D plane, then there are three string components associated with the deformation within this plane, and they are known as the plane strings. There are two normal strings, epsilon x and y, and one shear string, gamma xy. In this video, we will discuss the plane strain transformation in a similar way as we discussed the plane stress transformation. For a particle represented by a plane element with original size dx and dy sitting in the xy coordinate system, after deformation, its size and shape have changed to this parallelogram shape. According to the definition of normal strain, the elongation along the x-axis is defined as positive normal strain epsilon x times the original length dx. And the elongation along the y-axis is defined as positive normal strain epsilon y times the original length dy. Also, according to the definition of shear strain, if shear strain gamma xy is positive, then this original 90 degree angle has now become an acute angle of half a pi minus the shear strain gamma xy. Therefore, each of these two angles is gamma xy over 2. Again, according to the sign convention, negative normal strain indicates contract of the length and negative shear strain indicates that the original 90 degree angle would become obtuse. Similar to stress transformation, now we are interested to know for a different orientation of the same particle at the same location, what are the new strain components. According to sign convention, this element has rotated a positive angle theta if it rotates counterclockwise and we wish to calculate the new normal strain epsilon x prime, new normal strain epsilon y prime, and the new shear strain gamma x prime y prime according to this new orientation. This essentially becomes a geometry problem and I will skip the procedure and only present the results. Therefore, depending on the angle of rotation theta, we can calculate the new plane strain components from the original plane strain components using these general equations. Also, epsilon x prime plus epsilon y prime always equals to epsilon x plus epsilon y, the sum of the two original normal strain components. You might already notice the similarity between these general equations and the general equations for plane stress transformation that we studied before. In fact, you can get exactly the same set of equations if you replace sigma x with epsilon x, replace sigma y with epsilon y, and replace tau xy with gamma xy over 2. And similar to plane stress transformation, we can again apply our calculus knowledge and find the principal strains and maximum in plane shear strain for this element as well as the associated orientations. And once again, Morse circle can be used for plane strain transformation as well. In this case, the horizontal axis represents the normal strain along the x-prime direction. The vertical downwards axis represents the shear strain gamma x-prime y-prime over 2. The center of the circle is at the average normal strain, 0. The radius of the circle is given by this equation, which equals to the absolute value of half of the maximum in-plane shear strain. 
the two intercepts represent the principal strengths, maximum here and minimum here. And an arbitrary point on this circle represents the normal strain and half of the shear strain for an arbitrary orientation. When we use Morse circle for strain transformation, again, we will first read the original normal strain and shear strain on Morse circle. And this line represents the original orientation when theta equals to zero. And for a new orientation theta, we will rotate this line counterclockwise by two theta, draw a new line here. And this intercept indicates the new normal strain along the x prime direction and the new shear strain. Let's look at this example. For this element with plain strains as shown, and its deformation is demonstrated on this image as well, we need to determine its new strain components for the same point in the material that has a new orientation, which is 15 degree counterclockwise from the original orientation. Therefore, in this case, theta is positive 15 degree because the rotation is counterclockwise. And we're going to apply the general equations directly. So this is the general equation for the calculation of the new normal strain along the x prime direction. And we substitute in all the parameters. And we can calculate the new normal strain along the x prime direction. And because the sum of the two normal strains stays the same, therefore, we can easily calculate the new normal strain along the y prime direction. And then we're going to apply this equation to calculate the new shear strain within the x prime, y prime plane. And now let's demonstrate our results. The original element has been rotated counterclockwise by 15 degree. And this is the new deformation. This change in size along the x prime direction corresponds to the new normal strain epsilon x prime times the original length dx prime. Notice that epsilon x prime is negative. Therefore, this is the shortening along the x prime direction. This change inside corresponds to the new normal strain epsilon y prime. And each of these two angles is half of the new shear strain gamma x prime y prime. Now let's look at this example. For the same element from the previous example, we need to determine its principal strengths as well as the orientation of the principal strains. We're going to apply the equations directly and calculate the two principal strains. One is minimum and the other is maximum. And when principal strains occur, the shear strain associated is a zero. And we can also determine the orientation. There are two possible principal angles. And we want to know which one is associated with which principal strain. We can just pick one and substitute it into the general equation and calculate the associated normal strain along the x prime direction to be negative. This tells us that this is the minimum normal strain. And now we can demonstrate the principal strains. Remember, in the previous calculation, we used a negative principal angle. Therefore, the original element has rotated clockwise by 8.35 degree. And this is the new deformation. This shortening along the x prime direction corresponds to the minimum normal strain, which occurs along the x prime direction. And this elongation along the y prime direction corresponds to the maximum normal strain, which occurs along the y prime direction. Notice here, since the shear strain is zero, which means that there is no angle change. And that's why after deformation, the element remains a rectangular shape. Let's look at this example. We have the same element with the same plane strains from the previous two examples, but now we need to determine its maximum in-plane shear strain as well as the associated orientation. Again, we're going to apply the equation directly to calculate the absolute value of the maximum in-plane shear strain. And when this occurs, the two normal strains are the same, and they both equal to the average normal strain. 
and we can also determine the associated orientation. There are two angles, and associated with each of these angles, we can have either a um, positive or negative maximum in plane shear strain. Therefore, we need to decide for sure by taking one of these two angles and substitute it into the general equation and calculate the associated shear strain, which is positive. And now we can demonstrate our results. The original element has been rotated counterclockwise by an angle of 36.7 degree. And here is the deformation. As you can see, the sides change along the X prime and Y prime directions are the same. Therefore, if the original shape of your element is a square, after deformation, the shape will have changed into a diamond. And again, each of these two angles is half gamma x prime y prime. The state of strains in the previous examples can also be described using this Morse circle, and I strongly encourage you to try it out yourself. On this circle, the center corresponds to the average normal strain. The radius corresponds to the absolute value of half of the maximum in-plane shear strain. The principal strains are represented by the intercepts, maximum here and minimum here. This point corresponds to the original normal strain and shear strain, and this line corresponds to the original orientation. This angle right here corresponds to a clockwise rotation of an angle of 2 theta p to get to the orientation of the principal strains, or a counterclockwise rotation of an angle of 2 theta s to get to the orientation of the maximum in-plane shear strain.